Good morning, second hour. I'm glad to be back with you today. I'm going to start today by telling you what you can expect today and tomorrow, and then we'll do the stuff we're doing today. So today you can expect that I'm going to go over with you how to write your unit two compare and contrast paragraph. So I'm going to go over that today, not only how to write it, but how to edit and revise it. Hopefully you already started that, but what can you do? If you didn't, let's get you caught up today. So that's today's goal is writing that compare and contrast paragraph, getting that is getting that to be your best writing. That is a summative assessment. So it's worth 60% of your grade. In other words, we do this paragraph instead of a quiz and it replaces the essay we used to have in American Lit at this point. So if I was a student, I'd rather write a paragraph than an essay. That's just me. So that's today. Tomorrow, we're going to start the next unit, which is unit three. It's modernism and the Harlem Renaissance. So I'm going to go over with you tomorrow the differences and the similarities between units one and two and these last units, three and four. You may recall that I said at the beginning of the semester that the closer we get to the end of the semester, the closer the language comes to our American English currently. So it should be getting easier as the year goes on reading wise. I'm also gonna tell you tomorrow what modernism is and what the Harlem Renaissance is. So you can complete task two on your week one handout and submit it. Speaking of, let's show you where you're gonna write things this week. So if you haven't had a chance yet to open up your week one handout, please do so. So as I mentioned earlier, your compare and contrast paragraph is a summative assessment, so 10 points. And then the information about modernism and the Harlem Renaissance is a formative assessment, 10 points. So 60% of your grade summative, 40% of your grade formative. So here's where we'll start today for task one. So I'm going to go over with you in a moment here how to write your academic paragraph with a text citation that compares and contrasts two different writers from unit two. And I'll give you some ideas as far as how to start that. Here is where you're going to write your rough draft. So you'll do that today. I will go over with you, as promised, the editing and revising checklist. I would suggest rough draft, then show your editing and revising. So whatever you write here, I should see crossing out things. I should see marking if a punctuation is wrong, that kind of thing. And we'll go over that. Then the final step for your final draft, or your final step for this paragraph, is to write a final draft here. So this is the version that should show changes from your rough draft, and it should be your best writing. So this final draft should be typed. Up to you if the rough draft is typed or not. You can write it if you prefer that. So that's what we're doing today. It's just working on this paragraph, and then tomorrow we'll work on modernism and the Harlem Renaissance. So let's talk about this paragraph. So here I included this slide and the following slide to give you a review of what were the main questions and ideas in unit two, and which authors do I have to choose from? So here's who you get to choose as far as comparing and contrasting goes. You can write about Irving, Emerson, Thoreau, Whitman, or Dickinson. So you got five options on who you wanna compare and contrast. And then here's some of the terms from this unit. If you want to include them in your paragraph, you can. It's not required. So here's a couple of suggested topics as far as how to compare and contrast the authors. So one suggestion is you can compare and contrast the two transcendentalists, Emerson versus Thoreau. How are they the same? How are they different? Specifically, you want to look at the writing to show how they're the same and how they're different because you need at least one correct text citation from the work. You can use one's text citations that you've used before. You can also use ones that I've included in examples. Not a problem. All right, another possible topic. You could talk about themes of American romanticism by talking about 
Washington Irving, and then Ralph Waldo Emerson, both of them reject traditional religion. Irving by writing a satire, making fun of it a bit, and then Emerson talking in his essay about how you should rely on yourself and how you are connected to God. You could also talk about Emerson and Thoreau and just their use of figurative language. You don't even have to talk about transcendentalism if you don't want to. If you really enjoyed transcendentalism or felt you got that part of the unit, at least that was the case last year, you can talk about how transcendentalist beliefs are shown in their writing. So for example, one transcendentalist belief is that God, nature, and humankind are all connected. So you could talk about how Emerson writes about that and how Thoreau writes about that. Final suggestion, you can compare and contrast Whitman's poetry to Emerson's writing because they both were inspired by nature. All right, so those are your options as far as giving you some topic ideas. If you have a different idea, you can do that too. As long as you're comparing and contrasting two of the writers from unit two, it's really up to you how you approach it. So first, let's talk about steps. How do we write this academic paragraph? So first you decide what you wanna talk about. Take the prompt and make a clear topic sentence. So in other words, so if you decide, I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna talk about Emerson and Thrill, and the prompt says, discuss how transcendentalist beliefs are shown in their writing, here's my topic sentence. A transcendentalist belief that both Emerson and Thoreau discussed in their writing is the belief that humankind, God, and nature are all connected. So long story short, you need a clear topic sentence that says which two writers you're gonna compare and what you're gonna talk about in their writing. And if you're wondering, hey, can I use this sentence? Yes, you can use my example topic sentence if you wish. These are in the slides for you. Step two. Now I gotta find my citation and start fleshing this out. So find an example or two. Let's say I'm doing the Emerson and Thoreau one. Find an example or two in the writing to support your topic sentence. This is a good place to include your text citation. So that includes quotation marks and punctuation right on the end of the quotation marks and your page number included. Don't forget your author as well if you haven't set that up in the text yet. Let's see, I already told you that, that you can use text citations you've used before. So the body of your paragraph is at least three sentences, and it needs to show evidence or proof of what your topic sentence is. So my topic sentence was Emerson and Thoreau have writing that shows the belief of God, nature, and humankind are connected. That means I need at least three sentences showing that. So I could have an example from Emerson's essay, Nature, then an example from Thoreau's uh, Walden and have quotes from that that show in at least three sentences how it works. One thing that works really well if you're struggling to come up with three sentences, put in a text citation and then explain what the text citation shows or means. That's the two sentences right there. So step three is the conclusion when you write an academic paragraph. So you need to tell the reader why they should care about the information, or you can give one last opinion on the author's or readings. Don't write in conclusion. It, write, it drives English teachers crazy. Because the conclusion's the last sentence, it's kind of redundant. Uh, that's like announcing it twice. So don't phrase in conclusion. Other phrasings you can try is, as you can see, overall, I think you get the idea. You may have heard from your other English teachers, don't say I in an academic writing, and that's true, but you can in the conclusion. So in the conclusion, you can come right out and say, I didn't really enjoy these authors, but their writing is significant. Or I did enjoy reading these because whatever it is you wanna do to end your paragraph. Once you have this rough draft written, the next step is editing and revising. So here's a checklist for you that you can use to go through and double check. Do I have everything correct? So for example, do your sentence start with a capital letter and have a period or an exclamation at the end? Speaking of exclamations, 
Only use those when it's absolutely necessary and only one mark. Have you broken up run-ons? Have you spelled the author's name correctly? You get the idea. So use this checklist to go through your rough draft. And like I said at the start, edit the heck out of it. Show the editing so I can see. Make it messy with corrections and changes. Your last step is going to be typing your final draft after you edit and revise. Here is an example you can use for any of these steps. So if you're kind of struggling on how to start, you can use this as a guide for writing your paragraph. Notice I said a guide. I do not want you to just retype my example. I want to see your thinking, learning, and writing. But I did provide an example so you can see where you're headed. All right, so that's what I have for you today. You folks now have the rest of the time to write on that paragraph. Get that paragraph done, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about Unit 3. As always, if you need things, please let me know. You got this.